no fancy intro today in way of the hunter. Uh, just a discussion about herd management and if it works or not. I have uh, a bunch of information to give you guys. Um, all the information isn't to uh, persuade anyone one way or the other or uh, prove anything this way or that. It's just information to take and to consider and to uh, uh, analyze yourself, but it is about herd management and if actually herd management uh, does work. In previous videos I explained uh, the theory behind herd management and how the developers have explained it to us and over the past oh, I don't know, a month or so um, I had ran this fairly long experiment with uh, managing the fitness of a mule deer herd and I could have done it faster but I decided to do it fairly like normal like just hunt normally and let them grow up on their own and all that sort of stuff and basically now the science behind herd management is completed for me now it doesn't mean I know everything about it or anything like that or I'm completely done with it um, but the bulk of uh, me taking a look at uh, the average fitness throughout a habitat how it applies to the thirds and everything like that is fairly complete um, at this point and with some very puzzling results so I'm gonna go over that here in this episode hopefully it's not uh, super long uh, but my target mule deer herd uh, my little favorite herd out here just outside of the lodge uh, has been my test herd for this uh, and it has uh, basically come of age and the full uh, test results are in uh, but to fully understand uh, what I'm about to, uh, to explain here, I need to explain how I how I set this up. So, uh, quite some time ago, I went through all the mule deer herds in the grassland, in uh, in Nez Perce here, Cottonwood, and Rivermouth. Uh, the definition of you know of uh, herd management and and how the fitness works is that new animals. Uh, take on the average fitness of uh, of the species in a single habitat. They will they will roll on it on the basis of a bell curve. So I have previous videos that do explain it. Um, I don't have the fancy technique of plopping them up on the screen or anything like that. Uh, but it's just uh, there's a bamboo at herd management one that kind of goes through all of it in detail. But essentially, it means the higher your average fitness is uh, in the habitat of that certain species the chance of a higher fit animal to be born um, is higher uh, just because it bumps it up. Now I did some math when I when I did with you know throughout the year of playing with the hunter and everything like that. Now this is just estimation and everything like that but the numbers are probably going to be about about right or close to it anyways. Uh, take a primary habitat for example. Uh, by my best guess if you didn't touch anything in the game and just let the animals live and you know frolic along like normal and just you know uh, die of old age and be born and all that uh, the average fitness looks like it's sitting at 55 percent so the bell curve sits at 55 most of them will sit at 55 some will be at 50 some will be at 60 you know some are 45 some are 65 but the bulk are all along there some stretch to 70 some will dip down into the 30s right that's, that's pretty much where it sits, but the bulk is in between, um, you know, that 50 and 60% sort of mark, or just a little bit on either side. Now that is if you just kind of left the left the herds alone to do their thing. You can improve the 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 fitness and the of the entire habitat by removing the low fit animals, and that should make the new ones that are born have a higher chance of rolling the high fitness. So I went through and cleared out the low fit animals. So anything below 50% of mule deer uh, up in Cottonwood and Rivermouth. Now by definition in the encyclopedia and uh, from what we've heard from the developers, uh, the average fitness rules per habitat. So the grasslands is a habitat, the lowland forest is a habitat, and the highland forest is a habitat, etc. Uh, so that the understanding is the mule deer and grasslands do not interact with the mule deer and the lowland or highland forests. Uh, so it's basically the average fitness of uh, the grasslands here. Now, I went through and I removed all mule deer low fit 
are all low fit mule deer in both of these zones. So that's any mule deer below 50%. And I left the high fit ones. Uh, before I did that, I, I took this uh, mule deer herd that's up here and I, I removed all the bucks from it. Uh, so all the male mule deer um, I harvested. And basically, um, I did that at the start of a year. And then throughout the remainder of the year, I removed all the other low-fit animals. So the theory was, uh, if you remove all the low-fit animals in a single year, the bell curve will shift up. Um, so the average fitness of the habitat will go up because uh, all the low fits are gone. And then at the start of a new year, when the dice are rolled and the new animals are determined, they should be rolling on a higher fit grasslands. Because if you take all the low fit out in that one single year when the new year starts, that should be the most aggressive way to push the average fitness up um, of the habitat. Uh, so that's basically what I did. So I had this one herd up here that I've been monitoring. So all the mule deer uh, the males were gone out of that. So when the new year rolled around and all the low fits in the habitat were gone, this, uh, this mule deer herd uh, would have rolled on a higher fit, average fitness, um, in the habitat. Uh, so, and then I basically let it grow up. Now I could have harvested them right away and just saw the percentage, but I thought it'd be more fun to, uh, watch them sort of grow up. So they're now mature. Uh, they're not quite at their oldest age. I estimate they're probably about 10 years old or something like that. Uh, but we're just going to take a look at them now. Now keep in mind, by my estimations and best calculations I can get really, uh, the average fitness when these guys were born uh, should have been a good 10% higher, at least, than, uh, than it was before. So instead of a 55% average fitness, they should have been born at a 65% mark. So most of them should have been lying between 55 and 75 percent instead of, you know, the the 45 and 65 before. Uh, so I sh should have seen them, and I was hoping now uh, that I'd be getting some 80 percent, you know, some 85 percent, kind of things like that, like uh, making sure that I didn't get any low fits at all, really, because if the average is 65, uh, the you know, it's low odds that it's going to fall below 50 percent. So that was the test. And uh, just bear in mind that's my rough calculations on, on how that should have worked. So they should actually be right up here. Yes, there they are there now. I gotta make sure. Yes, this is them. I had to play around a little bit here uh, during a live stream with them, so. Right, we're gonna scan them here. Now that's basically the information is what I did. And that's how the understanding of the game pretty much works. Uh, but here are sort of the real results. About a 10 year old, remember they lived about about 12. Uh, but we're basically looking at one star, one star, one star, one star. And uh, did I already get this one? Anyways, all five are one star matures. So, and I just alerted them there. Uh, so this got me really thinking, and uh, and uh, <laughs> I wanted to share this, uh, you know, to kind of brainstorm and get the discussion going here. Uh, I can harvest some of these so you can see, but I actually have harvested them before. I was uh, fiddling around with the save game a little bit. Not a single one of these are above 50%. Uh, one's in the 20s, one's in the 30s. Um, I don't think any are above 50 uh, I think they're all low fit mule deer herd, uh, and by my with it, and they spawn that way uh, without is this guy being defensive here, <laughs> and they spawn that way with no low fit mule deer in the habitat. So we just gotta think about that for a minute, and that's what the video is about. It's it's to show you this and to sort of sort of brainstorm at what could have happened there or how this work. I mean, even if you just took out five of the deer without doing any herd fitting or herd management, what are the odds of getting five one-star matures? So part of me thought maybe I broke the game when I did this. Um, because surely one of them should have rolled higher than 50% or something. Uh, now, in the next couple of years, because I think they're 10, 
11 or 12, two of them go two stars. So I mean, I think they're like a 40%, 45% or something. I'm not sure I'm going to harvest them in the video. Maybe I'll take a couple, I don't know. But yeah, sort of take my word for it, I guess. Um, but maybe we'll we'll take down a couple of them. Uh, but I wonder, maybe I broke the game. But I don't think I did. So this is completely throwing my understanding of herd management kind of out the window here. And I've got a few theories. Uh, one of them is that the herd fitness plays a much stronger role than we have been able to figure out or calculate. Because the herd fitness here didn't have any males in it at all. Right? So does that just set the... Does that skew the average fitness from the habitat down? I don't I don't quite know. It looks like it did something. Possibly. Uh, that could have been a reason. So the specific uh, fitness of the herd um, could have been a factor. So that's something that we've never been able to really figure out or see. Um, is apparently there's habitat fitness and then there's the herd fitness. Uh, so maybe this is what happens when you remove all the males from, from a herd. Uh, maybe it um, somehow negatively affects the, the average uh, of the habitat on it. Like maybe it's bringing it down. I'm not really sure. That's one theory. Another theory is maybe there weren't enough uh, mule deer bucks in the habitat to run the calculation correctly since I removed a bunch of them. And then there's the theory um, that uh, doing the herd management the way I was doing it there uh, had no impact at all. And the way the game calculates the herd fitness isn't actually that. However, that's sort of how it's been explained to us, so I'm not too sure on that. Uh, uh, we have been, it has been confirmed that it's a bell curve and that you can shift the bell, the bell curve um, with the average fitness. Uh, the other theory, of course, is the herd fitness, average fitness stuff just isn't working. Uh, which is the theory here. Another one is that maybe it isn't habitat-wide. Maybe it is taking the average fitness of highlands and lowlands, all mule deer across the map. Um, at this point, I am not sure. Uh, so I'm making the video, just to throw it out there. Uh, so you can take a look at, uh, at this and, uh, you know... Take, take the information in your own game, kind of ponder this. Uh, but that's essentially that what I did. I uh, removed all the low fit uh, mule deer in one year. And then uh, these guys spawned in the year after that, where the average fitness should have been higher. And uh, they are all low. They're all low fit animals. Uh, oh, I didn't switch my gun out, so all I got is a 30-30. Um, yeah, I don't... I mean, we'll take one with a 30-30. But it's yeah, at this point it doesn't matter. It's uh, I've already I've already taken them all. So there we'll, we'll grab this guy. Maybe uh, track him down. Yeah, he's going down over here. And we'll just see what his fitness is. But yeah, I've already I've already kind of looked at them all. So I'm trying to think of uh, other theories as to how that happens or how did I get five one star matures all. All in one roll. I mean, even even at the average fitness. I mean, it's like they rolled on an average fitness bell curve down in the 40 percent. So, how did removing all the low fits make the average in the habitat down in the 40s? Because uh, yeah, there's a 20 in here. There's a 30 percent in here, and I think there's a couple 40 percent or at all. It's like the average is a 40 percent. Or did I just get a really bad roll? Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe the herd fitness plays a much bigger role than we think. Uh, needless to say, the the outcome to this experiment for me is um, I probably won't be doing uh, herd management in the game. Mainly because it's too unreliable. I mean, most people will do herd manage like I do like normally, you, you walk around, you remove the low fit ones, uh, and then slowly improve uh, the fitness of a habitat over time. But the problem with doing it casually and slow like that is you only take probably a couple, two or three 
you know, think of these grasslands for a reason, like for, for an example. I mean, when you're passing through, you'll take, you know, each year you'll take two or three low-fit mule deers. There's probably like 50 mule buck in the entire grasslands. And taking two or three of them in a year is not going to do much to shift the bell curve at all. It'll move it up one or two percent. Uh, and, I mean, if you keep doing it year after year after year, maybe. But the math says that that progress would be really, really slow if you progressed at all. Uh, like doing a slow, a slow herd fitness like that. Uh, so I, I'd already come to that conclusion that if you're slowly managing the, uh, the herd fitness of the habitat, um, that it doesn't really have much of an effect, because um, all my five stars and stuff have come without any kind of extensive herd management. So I got thinking, and I'm like, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, yeah, 18%. This was on a, a calculated 65% average fitness of the of the habitat. All low fit mule deers were gone when this guy was born. Yeah, he like broke the game. Anyways, what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I lost my uh, train of thought there. That 18% was just so shocking. I mean, I think I seen him before, of course, because I took them all down. But anyways, uh, yeah, so. Oh yeah, I was saying before there, like the slow way wasn't working. I didn't, I didn't think it was doing anything at all, um, really. I mean, some people will say it does. It's really hard to prove if it is or not. I mean, I don't do a whole lot of herd fitness uh, management at all for most species, and I still get trophies and things like that. So it can easily seem like maybe it's working. I don't think it was. So that's what the experiment was about. Um, I was going to push the herd fitness as hard as I could within a single year to make make it work, and it backfired. That is a horrible herd. Somehow, r removing all the low-fit mule deers in this habitat made that an extremely low-fit herd, and I don't understand how. So, anyways, uh, like I was saying at the start of the video, this isn't to conclude anything or solve anything. It's just so you can see what that does. And you can make your own conclusions. Uh, but as I was saying uh, before, uh, with me, I don't think I'll be doing herd fitness anymore. Um, I'm doing, you know, looking at it and paying attention to it for good, you know, over a year since the game came out. Um, it's an interesting concept to the game. I don't know if it's working as intended. I'm sure I'm missing something. Which the assumption is... That herd fitness really plays a big part, but man, what a big part does that play? Uh, but it's also if it's if the herd management is so complex that we can't quite figure it out, even in you know even focusing on it. I mean, it's not really practical for the average player to use because uh, I don't think the slow the slow management does it, and being aggressive on it certainly doesn't seem to uh, have worked. Uh, so. Uh, I'm not really too sad about it or anything like that. I'm just like, oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, maybe I can stop focusing on it now. And I can go back to doing some ranger hunting, which I'm kind of looking forward to do. And, uh, yeah. So I wanted to make a bit of a video uh, just to throw that out there because that was extremely surprising to me that the herd fitness uh, didn't really didn't really go up. Uh, so let me know what you think of that. I know it's kind of uh, just a rant little video with not much hunting to it. Well, it's not really ranting. It's just, uh, hey, guys, look at that. Uh, look what look what happened to that experiment. Uh, so that's what happened. I'm not really too sure I should continue uh, rambling on. About 20 minutes of me rambling there. Um, but I really want to put that out there and see what people think. Uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, think of what happened there. Broke the game. Or the herd management, like the specific herd fitness, overrided something. Or there wasn't enough animals to calculate on. Or it's calculating outside of the grassland area. Man, it's so weird though. I had all the low fits removed in the whole area, and they ro and I roll an 18 and a 20 and a 30 percent and like a 40 percent. It's it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. That's why I had to make the video. I'm just like, what? 
But I, I'm, I'm okay with it because, um, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to ignoring the herd management stuff. <laughs> just kind of going back to just sort of hunting. Uh, anyways, there's still always science to do, but I'm, I think I'm okay with, uh, with maybe letting the herd fitness go, because that was, uh, I don't know, might have broke something. But anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm very curious about that. I, f I find this very interesting, uh, that that happened, and quite surprising to me. Uh, but anyways, we can still enjoy the game, of course, and, uh, hunt like normal. I, I'm definitely thinking about, you know, switching into ranger mode, doing a hunter two in ranger again. Uh, that's what I kind of enjoy, and maybe, maybe ignore the herd fitness for a bit. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, happy hunting, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and, uh, yeah, let me know. Take care, guys. See you later.